Hi, everybody, and welcome to Common Society Issues. My name is Kira Hinehan from Kira Hinehan Consulting, and I am an inner power educator and a life and business coach and mentor. So I'm here today to interview Jennifer Byrne, and you know something I'm really excited. Jennifer is an amazing, amazing woman, and she does something a little bit different, and I'm going to let her describe what it is, okay? So Jen, welcome, and thank you so much for giving me your time. How are you? I'm great, Kira. Lovely to be here as always. Love chatting to you. It's great. Um, <laughs> but tell me, tell me about what you do and why it is that you do what you do. Okay, so I like to call myself a deep health coach. And what I mean by that is it's like a 360 degree approach to your health and well-being. Um, for me, like health is not just about the physical aspect, like the diet or the exercise. Like to be healthy and happy from the inside out, we have to nourish ourselves from the inside out. So what I mean by, you know, 360 degree approach is we need to look after our mind health. You know, it's so important to, to look after how we're feeling from the inside, you know, looking at the mind and kind of getting that chimp brain and our human brain in balance so that they both counteract and work with each other and not allowing mm -hmm. emotions to take over, you know, and, and having a logical sense of thinking about things as well. Um, and also then, you know, to, looking at our environments, who we're spending our time with, what we're watching and what subconsciously we're taking in on a daily basis. It's looking at rest and recovery. It's looking at our digestion. It's, it's a whole broad spectrum, a 360 degree approach to health. And I think it's just, I'm so passionate about, you know, as I said, nourishing ourselves to flourish, to be that healthiest and happiest and, you know, best version of ourselves that we can be. It's just really, really important. Um, I love that. I love it. And the first time I heard you use the word deep health coach, the thing that came to my mind was, you know, when you give a place a deep clean, right? And you actually go right down into the nitty gritty, you go into your skirting boards, you go into the grout and the putty and your tiles, and you get right down to the source of where everything is. And the minute I heard you use the word deep health, I was like, oh my God, you really have captured what is necessary, I think when it comes to health. It's not about one part of it. It's not about your exercise or just your diet or just your mindset or just your condition. It's a whole approach and I love it. Oh, thank you. But it's just like that. It is a whole approach because, you know, definitely in this day and age, like so many lifestyle diseases can actually be prevented. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about making those little changes in our lifestyle, making positive changes. You know, the onset of like the diabetes type 2, cholesterol, high blood pressure, all these things were just so kind of like, oh, except that we just need to take tablets for these things. But not necessarily. Yeah. You know, yes, we, I understand there is genetics involved in a lot of cases. But I mean, like I, a lot of those cases can actually be prevented through lifestyle changes. And I mean, you know, let alone like for, for our health and well-being, but also our mental health as well. And, our sense of self and our sense of nourishing ourselves and being the best version that we can be because unless we are the best versions of ourselves, we can't really help anybody else. And I'm so passionate about helping as many, many people as I can globally, um, you know, to overcome, I suppose, challenging times and, and using, you know, health and well-being and looking after ourselves to actually really build ourselves up to be the best version of ourselves that we can actually have the tools and strategies in place to overcome, you know, tough times in life. Um, yeah, no, I would agree 100%. There's so much that can be done through through your well-being in order to make yourself well on every level. And I know that you walk your talk. So tell me a little bit about your path, I suppose. I think everybody's going to want to hear about the fact that you competed and what you competed in and a little bit about your hiking um, I'm going to call it a passion. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I suppose for me, like throughout my life, I always said I had two men in my life, my, my sons, but now I've actually, or no, I've actually got three because I'm a grandson, but then the fourth man in my life now is Jim, the gym, you know? I always found a sense of that, that place for me, going to the gym was me finding a little bit of myself and claiming back my power in my journey. You know, I, I'm an, an Irish Times and Amazon best-selling author with we so much together. And I wrote about my chapter in that about claiming back my power and finding out who Jennifer really was and, and being truthful for me 
to me, you know, I'm not wearing that mask anymore. I'm, I'm trying to pretend to be someone I was and I'm hiding myself, you know, and, and going through life with blinkers on. I'm not actually living my life. I'm, I'm being me and being true to myself and being Jennifer, you know. Mm-hmm. So part of my, my healing process would have been, you know, taking part in um, a journey to, to step up on stage and, and do some bodybuilding competitions. And um, so, I, you know, I, at first I just thought it was crazy, but... It was part of a healing process for me. It wasn't about how, how I looked. It was nothing got to do about muscles or abs or anything like that. Yes, I got them. Um, but it was more about the process, the journey to get me up onto that stage. It made me feel strong. It, you know, it made me feel empowered as a woman. It made me feel so confident in myself. Yes, it, I was fearful of, of stepping out on stage at what I was 43 in my first bodybuilding competition. You know, looking like I'd been looking like I'd been tangled, and I remember just feeling that that rush of fear. And I'd been in, in really fearful situations before that, but this was a positive fear, and it was just like, just get out, just don't fall. My my like my posing was atrocious. My little dance routine was atrocious. I didn't know what I was doing, but I didn't care because I felt this is me, and I, and I was so proud to get up on that stage and feel empowered as a woman, both mentally and physically. You know, so I would have, that would have been at 43 and then I did another competition at 44 and I hope to do one now before I'm 50 and document that. <laughs> You've heard it here first, folks. We're going to see her on stage again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely no limits. Age is nothing. So, you know, don't ever put limits on yourself. And I think, you know, in my own life, I always put limits on myself or that's striving for perfection all the time. And it's, it's more or less like, you know, just strive for progress, not perfection. And just aim to be that 1% better each and every day of your life. And you'll do really well in life if you just aim for that 1% better. We tend to put too much pressure on ourselves, especially as women. I think we put too much pressure on ourselves. And we don't give ourselves enough credit for our bodies. Our bodies are absolute, like, fascinating temples. You know, it's fascinating, like, whether you've, you've gone through childbirth or... You've gone through trauma in your life, whatever. Our bodies are like just our soul being. They're, they're, they're beautiful things, no matter what shape or size we are. They're beautiful. And I think as women, we really, really need to learn to love ourselves from the inside out. Mm-hmm. And I would agree. Cherish ourselves, you know? 100%. And I love what you're saying about the 1% better. And I think even when it comes to the mindset, or especially when it comes to the mindset, you know, that idea of, one percent each day at the end of 365 days you have 365 percent you know if you were to measure it and if you were put down a feeling on the first of january 2021 and on the 365th day of of 2021 you were to measure the way that you increased the positivity around that feeling over the 365 days that would be a fantastic thing to do yeah and people don't understand. They don't get it that it's that simple. They think that they have to put massive pressure on themselves in order to get to some silly goal that's been given to them, something that's been outside of themselves rather than inside of themselves. And I know that you very much focus on what goes on inside rather than what's going on outside. Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, we have to get that master that inside journey first. And mm-hmm. you know, even when it comes to like health and well-being and health and fitness and, and losing weight and things like that, which the majority of, of my clients would come to me about losing weight, you know, but when you look deeper into the, the problem, there's a lot more underlying. And, you know, there is no quick fix. It's, it's a constant, you know, it's a consistency. And that's, you know, striving for that progress or that 1%. So like, you know, over a year, you know, it's not about losing four stone in six weeks. It's doing something progressively and consistently over time so that you're ingraining that habit into somebody's lifestyle. It's working yeah. with somebody's lifestyle and what suits them. The gym, yes, lifting weights might be for everybody, but, you know, you can find me hiking up mountains and that as well. Like, that's a form of exercise. Dancing around your kitchen or your garden is a form of exercise. It's just, it's movement, but it's, it's, it's just kind of setting these, you know, more positive ha- habits, replacing you know, maybe more negative um, habits with positive habits. And that's something I am an expert at because I've been there, done that, worn the t-shirt. You know, I practice what I preach. Um, And that's why I think I'm so passionate about it because I know the power of just changing small little things in your life, but they make absolutely huge, huge changes to your life in general, you know? 
Absolutely. The small things make the big things when they're all added together. Yeah. When you decided to become a deep health coach, what was it that I suppose was the catalyst for your journey? What what happened to make you decide, right, this is where I'm going to take my life? Um, well, for me, I suppose I always, I, like I said, would have been grown up and not been true to who I was. And that would have led me into kind of toxic situations and, and toxic relationships. So I was in a really, really toxic relationship for about 11 years with my, my second son's dad. So it was physically and mentally an, an abusive relationship. So, you know, as you can imagine, that was really, really tough and challenging times for me. But, you know, what kept me going and what kept me just getting that little bit stronger and stronger and stronger was that, you know, sense of getting to the gym. You know, as my children got a little bit older, a little bit more time, they were in school, I went back into education. Little by little, I was building myself up and, and turning myself into who Jennifer really is. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it wasn't easy. Like this is just given a, a kind of a, a skeleton view in. You know, it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't an easy process. But it took me nearly twelve years to get out of that situation. And I wrote about that in my book. As I said, it, you know, it's about me claiming back my power and claiming back who Jennifer is. And um, mm-hmm. then, as you can imagine, when you're in a really, really, you know, abusive um, situation like that for so long, you become, you know. You just, you accept what is, even though it's not right. You just, you accept it because you think, okay, well, obviously my self-worth was zilch. You know, I had no self-worth and obviously didn't love me. Um, Walking through life, like I said, just with the blinkers on, every day, daily emotions. But like, those emotions were so suppressed in me that I didn't know, I lost Jennifer. I didn't know who Jennifer was. So when I finally broke free from that, the cycle of abuse continued, but this time it was a lot worse because the abuse of self, that self-abuse is so difficult and so hard to actually overcome. You know, so when I got out of that situation, like I was controlled for nearly 12 years of my life. So I went crazy. I was like, my first initial reaction was I'm free. So I'm getting out there. I'm going out, I can go out weekends. I can do what I like. I can wear my pennies clothes and can't say nothing. I can do and wear what I like and do what I want. And that was kind of my, you know, initial reaction. So for about 18 months, I spiraled into this self-destruct mode. I was going out, I was, I got myself back into college. I was in um, third level education at this stage, but like at weekends, I, I was overindulging in alcohol. I started using um, cocaine recreationally as well at weekends and getting into really, really toxic situations with people. And I was, t- I, I didn't recognize, I just remember I was about 40 just after my 40th birthday, and I just broke down. I was total self-destruct mode. I didn't recognize who I was in the mirror. Like, I was turned into a monster. This this is not you, Jennifer. I said, you have so much more to give in this life. You have so much potential. You know, I graduated, ended up graduating out, out of college with a 2-1 um, degree, double honors degree. And I was like, you, you're worth so much more than this. Like, what are you doing to your life? So like that, it started out just somebody giving me a little affirmation box about healing your life. And, you know, when I had that really major, major meltdown, you know, I, I was an emotional wreck, an emotional, mm-hmm. physical wreck from obviously abusing my body, oh, you know, with, with alcohol and, and drug intake. Um, so I knew something had to change. I just knew something had to change, that this, this wasn't Jennifer. I'd lost the sense of self. And it's really, really difficult to overcome that and um, you have to be get really really honest with yourself mm-hmm. i had to take responsibility responsibility for actions i had taken throughout my life you know and the truth hurts but until you're actually start being really really truthful with you and um, with yourself you know you're, you're not going to overcome stuff in life if you're not actually going to be true to yourself first you know 100% and that honesty as you said it can be really tough yeah. to face yourself because more than anything else personal responsibility is everything it actually doesn't matter what anybody else has done or said or how they've acted none of it makes a difference when you take all responsibility to yourself and you just say okay I have to look at me and then I have to grow because what's happened has happened and now I get the opportunity to go forward and you yeah. did that you did that with bells on you decided to take your the life by the balls <laughs> and actually go with it you know in yeah. a big way but it wasn't easy like I mean you know it, it's not easy it's a very very difficult journey like I was so angry I was angry at the world I was angry at myself 
you know, I had a very toxic relationship with my eldest son. His life was chaotic too. But like, how could I be there as a parent when I couldn't even look after myself? You know, so it was so much going on and trying to heal the whole world outside of me and focusing on what was going on around me. And But I wasn't looking within. I wasn't looking at myself. I had totally neglected myself. I certainly wasn't nourishing myself. You know, I was toxifying myself with alcohol and drugs and allowing horrible thoughts and, you know, that self-worth and self-love wasn't there at all. So it took baby steps for me to genuinely learn to love me and accept myself, you know, accept all those mistakes I've made, you know, take on the responsibility and say, yes, I've made some bad choices, but I'm going to start making better choices now. And that's what it's all about. It's all about choice. You know, I didn't want to be a victim or a survivor. I don't like being labeled those words. I chose to Mm -hmm. change my life. I chose to take on better things and and do better things that were actually fulfilling for me and helped me be the best version of me so that I can get out there and share my story and my expertise and help as many others as I can. And really, which I think is so cool and I'm just after thinking about this now and I'm so hopeful that you're going to smile as much as I'm smiling. (laughs) You called yourself a deep health coach so you went ahead and you really went deep to heal yourself, to nourish yourself so you could flourish in your own life. And it's so lovely to see that process, to see somebody who has really had whatever struggle, right? Whatever struggle and has decided and chosen to make something so much better out of their lives. And for that, that's really commendable, like really, really commendable. I think you're an absolutely powerful person for doing what you've done. And as always, I love having the chats with you. We always come up with plenty of stories and rectifying the world, don't we? (laughs) Indeed, yeah, definitely. (laughs) So my question, my next question for you, Jen, is when or who do you like working with? So is there a particular, is there a particular group of people that you really enjoy coaching that light you up and that make you go, yes, you're the one I want? I love working with women, especially women, I suppose, around that mid-30 age up to 50s, 60s, you know, um, you know, women that are kind of perimenopausal, going through the menopause, postmenopausal. It's just, it's, it's under, you know, it's understanding women. I think women, we can understand each other better. You know, it's, it's giving people, the women, the, t- the, the tips and the healthcare tips that they need to do to look after themselves that will actually help improve symptoms and help them overcome those challenging times, you know, without added stresses of outside life or, you know, if you do have challenging situations or you're in a relationship maybe you don't want to be in or in a job you don't want to be in or whatever the, the, the case may be. But it's giving you that sense of power and for you to find out who you really are and yeah. what floats your boat and what makes you tick and what makes you jump up out of bed and get that zest for life again and, and what you're passionate about. It's finding that passion. It's finding that beautiful person that you are within you know with the added help obviously you know a lot of women around that age struggle with weight loss and things like that as well but it's understanding how we can actually you know do that in a healthy way there's no it's not restricting yourself we want to take care of ourselves we want to look after ourselves so it's just it's it's just a case of educating women around that and helping them understand how our bodies work uh, and how we can you know maybe shed those few pounds that we just can't shed or, or whatever it is, or want to have improved health or, you know, an improved life. It's, it's a better mm-hmm. lifestyle and it's, it's living a more fulfilling life and the best life that you can for you. Because when you're living that best life for you, you can give so much to yourself to others. You know, yeah. I think women in that age group as well tend to have, maybe the, the children have grown up and they're, they're leaving home now and they're kind of like, well, I've been the caregiver for so long. So now it's time for me. Yeah. And that's what my program aims is, is giving that time back for you every day and taking that time out for yourself, improving your health, you know, your well-being, improving your movement, your fitness levels, every, anything. You know, it's, it's everything. It's improving sleep. It's improving stress. It's how to deal with stress and deal with shitty situations. You know, it's mm-hmm. all that combined. Um, I just, I... I so believe in it and so passionate about it because I know it works because I did it on me. Yeah, <laughs> I, exactly. I empowered myself to overcome a lot of shit and 
I want to empower so many others that I, you know, to overcome, you know. 100%. 100%. I love that. So essentially, you're giving people back time. Yeah. You know, people people want different things. They want various different things, but people always want time. They want to have extra time. And so by giving people this really rounded version of health coaching, this deep health coaching, you're actually giving them time on the back end. They're going to get years back. They're going to get months, weeks, years days that they didn't have because of maybe ill health or because of inabilities or because of you know, ways they were feeling, emotional stuff that's going on, physical stuff that's going on, mental stuff that's going on. And you're coming along as a deep health coach and you're going to be like, right, okay, so we're going to tackle this and tackle this. We're going to take our time. It's not about losing four stone by Friday. This is a myth, right? It's not going to happen. But it is about getting that time back. And, you know, people value time. And the more you value time and the more you understand how important it is, you know, the yeah. happier people you see are. It's great. Oh, definitely, but it's, it's, it's getting older and embracing that getting older. And, you know, it's like, I don't want to be spending my life in and out of hospital appointments or just yeah. popping pills for this, that, and the other, when I know that a lot of that can be prevented. Yeah. And all the better quality of life as we get older. Like our mood with everything. As I said, age is nothing. But like, as we get older, we need to make sure we are keeping up that muscle mass, that we're, we're getting enough nutritious food into the body you know that our mobility our joints and all that i still want to be able to go to the gym in my 70s and 80s you know I, i'm not going to stop that because that's what makes me feel good and it helps me because i'm moving better it's preventing me having falls or breaks or osteoporosis which is really important around menopause and age as well you know the onset of building stronger bones everything so resistance training adds in all of that and um, you know so it's a longevity of life plus a better quality of life as we age Brilliant. I love it. Tell me this. How can people get in contact with you if they want to work with you? Okay. Well, at the moment, the best way to get in contact with me is through Facebook or Instagram at Jayborn Coaching because the website is a work in action. So I won't, there's no point in going there just yet. So at Jayborn Coaching on Facebook or Instagram would be the best, the best places to reach me. Okay, perfect. So you heard it here, Jay Byrne Coaching on Facebook or Instagram if you want to work with Jen. And I would say if you are in those categories that she has said, so if you're in that 30 to 50-ish age bracket, peri, current or post-menopause, please get in touch with her because she is phenomenal at what she does. She walks her talk. She's done it for herself and she has done it for loads more people. And I would love you to get in contact with her if you need any help. So Jennifer, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and to do the interview. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you enjoy the evening and I will chat to you soon. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.